I still rejoice in the wonderful spirit we felt as we sang together this morning. Now let us rejoice in the day of salvation. No longer as strangers on earth need we roam. Good tidings are sounding to us and each nation. These words by Brother William Phelps are quite a contrast to the world's tendency to focus on bad news. It is true we live in a time foretold in the scriptures as a day of wars, rumors of wars, and earthquakes in diverse places, where the whole earth shall be in commotion and men's hearts shall fail them. But how does this affect us as members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Are we living with apprehension, fear, and worry? Or have we, amidst of challenges, not reason to rejoice? We all go through different life experiences. Some are filled with joy and others with sorrow and uncertainty. I remember a time when things didn't look good for our family when I was a child. It was in the winter of 1944, one of the coldest during World War II. The war front was approaching our town and my mother had to take us four children, leave all our possessions behind and join the millions of fleeing refugees in a desperate search for a place to survive. Our father was still in the military, but he and mother had agreed that if they were ever separated during the war, they would try to reunite at the hometown of my grandparents. They felt this place offered the greatest hope for shelter and safety. With bombing raids during the night and air attacks during the day, it took us many days to reach my grandparents. My memories of those days are of darkness and coldness. My father returned to us unharmed, but our future looked extremely bleak. We were living in the rubble of post-war Germany with a devastating feeling of hopelessness and darkness about our future. In the middle of this despair, my family learned about the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and the healing message of the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. This message made all the difference. It lifted us above our daily misery. Life was still thorny and the circumstances still horrible, but the gospel brought light, hope, and joy into our lives. The plain and simple truth of the gospel warmed our hearts and enlightened our minds. They helped us look at ourselves and the world around us with different eyes and from an elevated viewpoint. My dear brothers and sisters, aren't the restored gospel of Jesus Christ and our membership in his church great reasons to rejoice? Wherever you live on this earth and whatever your life situation may be, I testify to you that the gospel of Jesus Christ has the divine power to lift you to great heights from what appears at times to be an unbearable bur burden or weakness. The Lord knows your circumstances and your challenges. He said to Paul and to all of us, my grace is sufficient for thee. And like Paul, we can answer, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. As members of the Church of Jesus Christ, we may claim the blessings promised in the covenants and the ordinances we received when we accepted the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? The gospel of Jesus Christ is good news, glad tidings, and much more. It is the message of salvation as repeatedly announced by Jesus Christ and his apostles and prophets. It is my firm belief that all truth and light originating with God is embraced in the gospel of Jesus Christ. God. Our loving Father in heaven has said that it is his work and glory to bring to pass the immortality and eternal life of man. God the Father 
is the author of the gospel. It is a key part of God's plan of salvation or plan of redemption. It is called the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the atonement of Jesus Christ that makes redemption and salvation possible. Through the atonement, all men, women, and children are unconditionally redeemed from physical death and all will be redeemed from their own sins on the condition of accepting and obeying the gospel of Jesus Christ. Christ's gospel is the only true gospel and there shall be no other name given nor any other way nor means whereby salvation can come unto the children of man only in and through the name of Christ. The core elements of the gospel message are found in all the holy scriptures but are most clearly given to us in the Book of Mormon and in the revelations to the prophet Joseph Smith. Here Jesus himself plainly declares his doctrine and his gospel with which God's children must comply to have eternal life. The gospel is clear and plain. It answers the most complex questions in life. Yet even a young child can comprehend and apply it. As Nephi said, my soul delighteth in plainness. For after this manner does the Lord God work among the children of men. For the Lord God giveth light unto the understanding. For he speaketh unto men according to their language, unto their understanding. The prophet Joseph Smith followed the same pattern of clarity and plainness. When he explained to the world in a very concise way the first principles and ordinances of the gospel, which we must accept to receive the eternal blessings of the gospel. First, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, believing in the Redeemer, the Son of God, with unshaken faith in him, relying wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty to save. And then, pressing forward with a steadfastness in Christ, feasting upon the word of Christ. Second, repentance, which includes a change of mind, offering up a sacrifice of a broken heart and a contrite spirit, giving up sin and becoming meek and humble as a little child. 